Hello, this is Aline Wilson coming to you from Piedmont Arts and today we're going to be looking at the work of Karen Despot. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Karen Despot. I've been here in Martinsville since 1990 but originally from Ohio moved to Florida, moved to Durham, North Carolina and have so been, kind of been a lot of places on the East Coast. Uh, my degrees in advertising. I graduated from the University of Akron and did fine art while in college and before going to college and knew in eighth grade that I wanted a career in art so it's just continued. I sewed with my mom and have made wedding gowns but after we moved here there wasn't a lot of sewing. I had three small children, uh, painted murals in Albert Harris lunch cafeteria at Carlisle's library and a bunch of businesses and homes around town and also for a couple of furniture companies. In 1999 I wanted to see if I could still do fine art and that's where that all evolved from. But the show is my evolution from that point. The first piece here, I was about 14, 15 years old, and we were on vacation in North Myrtle Beach, and that's the beach from our balcony. And then my first commission was my grandmother's house. She lived next door. This was the garden between our homes and my dad was raised in that house so that you know that's 1974 so I think I was 16 17 at that point the next two are from college and obviously this is from an Ansel Adams photograph and it's three-dimensional with three or four layers of board charcoal and sand and then this is a lithograph work from college. The story behind this one, uh, our generation would know. Um, it, the apple core on the grass, eaten, was taken in the spot where the Kent State shootings occurred. We're from the Akron, Ohio area, and it was very close to go there. The flag backwards kind of speaks to all that was going on during that time. And who might these be? These are my three children. And I, that, that's what I did in 1999 to see if I could do fine art again. And so then it went from there. And who do they look like? I think they look a little bit like both of us. I think so too. <laughs> these two are the twins. They're now 36 and Renee's 34. Huh. And the medium? Pencil. That's what I thought. Pepper is our dog that just passed away the day after Christmas. Pepper was 19 and a half years old. And when I had my store at Druid Hills, she was the store dog. <laughs> and then over here is one of the twins. This is Andrea. Loves to read. And the, she was moving across the country. So I wanted to do a portrait of her, and this, this speaks to whatever's going, whatever you're dreaming as you're reading. Then we go into the main room, and this is an oil painting of a rose. I love flowers, the water drops on it. And it's, when I did graphic design, everything is very realistic. Yeah. And so I like the realism. I want you in with the quilt. The quilt, I did not do those blocks. When I joined the Quilt Guild here at Piedmont Arts in the mid-90s, we would meet and we would get um, block exchanges every uh, every month and my my name got pulled and my choice was crayon box colors with pure white 
So the ladies that were in the guild at the time each made a block, however they wanted to, and I got the blocks. Well, that was 1995, and I never did anything with them until the pandemic, and you're stuck at home, so all of my unfinished quilts got finished. So I did the top, and Mary Kay Washington here did all of the quilting, and she did such an amazing job. If you look at this fish, she put little fish in the blocks. She did something different in every in every block, and then in the blank ones, she really got creative. Yeah, and so. And this one up here is even different. And she did this all by hand, even though it was on her long armor quilter, quilting machine. So none of it was done by computer. The thing about these blocks, they've all got their names, they're signed. You have to search hard for them. And a lot of the ladies are no longer with us. So this quilt is for sale. The proceeds go to Piedmont Arts. And if it doesn't sell here while the show is up, then I am donating it to Piedmont Arts for a fundraiser. Well, maybe someone that sees this YouTube will be interested. That would be awesome. And then the rest of the paintings, it was really hard. I spoke to this at the opening of the show. Most of my work is commissioned work. And so I don't have it. It's in people's homes. It's portraits or it's on their walls or it's their dogs, it's them, it's at the church, because I've done a couple of ministers. So I don't own anything. So when I put the show together, when Betty asked me to do the show, I had to pull things off my walls at home. And so these are a lot of our favorite works. Ah. This, this is where we vacation twice a year, on Lido Beach off of Sarasota. And that's our view. These hang in my dining room and kitchen. The, these pairs are acrylic. The beach scene and the blue scene are oil. This is colored pencil on sandpaper. So I go between a lot of different mediums. A little ADD, I can't do just one thing. I'd say versatile. Yeah. These two are watercolor, and that's colored pencil. So I go from very realism to abstract, and I like both. So most artists try to have a look. Mm -hmm. I don't have one. This I had leftover paint on the palette after another commission or something, and I just put headphones on and painted whatever came. And this is, I think, my husband's favorite piece between that one and its twin over there. Ah. The quilt here was done in, the date is on here. Um, Nineteen ninety six. It was a challenge with the quilt guild again, and it's a bargello type quilt. It's pieced, and then I wanted to see if I could do thread painting, and so the Luna moth is in the sky, night sky. This was again paint that was just on the palette, and I just played, and that's what came out, and I really like the way those like too. those go, the ones that I just let happen. Um, a watercolor of a tree up in Alexandria in a park. This again is Lido Beach, but this is watercolor and marker. Two oil still lifes that again, that's another look that I want to pursue. Obviously, they look a lot different than some of my other pieces. Um, and I did it along with a workshop. But I want to do more of that look. And that was all done um, a la prima, which means painted all at one time. 
instead of setting it, you know, taking a photograph and painting from a photograph and then working in between, it's all painted in one sitting. And this is acrylic, again, realism, but the texture comes from textured paint and medium un underneath it. This is the illustration of a book by Lil Ingram. And um, this is What Is My Hope, what it, or that's, my, that's Hope was the title of the book. A couple of little small pieces, that's oil. That's colored pencil, the bunny. Um, I'm, again, realism, abstract-ish. Uh, I'm Busy was a commission of a granddaughter. Thank you, Mommy. Okay. Yeah, come on in. So, y'all, as you know, this is Karen Despot, a uh, Martinsville famous artist. <laughs> Martinsville famous artist. <laughs> we don't need that up close. <laughs> well, let's let's share the microphone a minute. Okay. And um, Karen has has been very generous to share her time and talents with Piedmont Arts in many different ways. And I, I, I'm embarrassed to say that this is her first solo show in a, in at Piedmont Arts. I know you've entered expressions. Yeah many, many times and have won and purchase awards and all that, but it was long overdue that you finally well, have your you. own exhibit. So, And that's thanks to the Linwood artists. Yeah. 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 So Aileen and I are just ending the description, but I can go back over it with you all. So we can start here. These, all four of these are oil. And you want to start here? Anyway. Jamie, Jamie Beck is a French photographer and she took photograph each a photograph each day during the pandemic because in France they weren't allowed to leave their apartments but for an hour a day and they had to have a paper with them just to leave to take a walk so she took these pictures and that's titled isolation I contacted her on Instagram and she gave me permission to paint her photograph um, and then uh, azaleas named after my, I found an azalea named after my daughter. So that's a Renee Michelle azalea. <laughs> Little oil of a rose. And then Jonathan, um, when Gordon Wetmore, and I don't know if Heidi's still here, but Gordon Wetmore had a show here of his portraits that he did of a lot of people in Martinsville. And the exhibit was here. While he was here, I still had my gallery at Druid Hills, and Gutsy Me just asked him if he would do a workshop at my gallery, and he said yes. So when he came to pick up his work, he did a weekend workshop where he demonstrated in the morning, and then we all painted with him in the afternoon, and Jonathan was our model. Ah. So, and Gordon died a year later. He was the president or a founder of the Portrait Society of America, so it was just amazing to have him here. Um, he ended up gifting me his portrait that he painted of Jonathan, so I have his also. Okay, thank you, Karen. You're and welcome. now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna follow you around with these ladies and let them ask you some questions. Okay. So, so Karen, mm -hmm. you are so talented in so many different media, but what's your favorite thing? Nothing. No, there isn't a favorite. I'm too ADD. <laughs> I mean, I just got back from bowling with her. I mean, we just finished bowling. <laughs> so, no, there is no favorite. Everything from sewing wedding gowns and quilts to I knit, I crochet, I paint in oils, paint in watercolor, paint in acrylic, I do colored pencil. So and teach it, others teach others, like Zach, so. I'd like to hear more about that. The one behind me? The green colors, yes. It was, again, just a, it, this one was a play. I had texture medium. If you come over, and you can touch these things. Nothing is untouchable. 
touch the quilts, it's fine, they're washable. Um, but come up and touch it. It is what they call acrylic medium. An acrylic medium will dry textured and it has like some of it has flakes in it, some of it goes smooth. And so I just stuck it on the canvas and then I wanted to see if I could make oil paint drip like watercolor. So I put the paint across this top and put turpentine on it to see, and it was a real mess on the floor underneath, <laughs> and real sticky. It took forever for it to dry, but it did fun things as it dried. Mm -hmm. And then I turned it right, you know, turned it the other way and turned it sideways, and which way do you want it to be? Because when it's something like this, it can, mm -hmm. you can do it in many different directions. Yeah. So people see different things in it. So the texture was first, and then uh -huh. the drips. Yeah, yeah. And there's texture in this one too, the same mm -hmm. type of thing. I put the texture on here first for the sand dune, and that's acrylic. With painting, you can put acrylic down and paint oil over top of it, but you can't put oil down first and paint acrylic over top of it. It'll beat up. And this is Lido Beach off the coast of Sarasota. We vacationed there. Is there any special painting that you'd like me to explain? Or quilt? Or whatever? Actually, she is not a relative of mine. Um, that is a commission, if any of you know Ronnie Cobbler, Kolodny's? Yes. Okay. That is Alma Kolodny's granddaughter. Great granddaughter. Ronnie Cobbler's granddaughter. And she's now a freshman in college. But she came up when Alma died and came to the funeral, and that was in Alma's backyard. And jet lag tired taking pictures of her because they wanted me to do a portrait and she just sat down and started picking at her toes and I <laughs> <laughs> so I just titled it I'm busy <laughs> and your own children are in the charcoal yeah they're in well actually that's graphite it's pencil mm -hmm. um, let's see this quilt here the explanation of this if you really Look at the fabrics. There are, I think, 20 different fabrics. Tilda is a fabric designer, and I entered a contest on Instagram, and I won the entire collection of her con fabrics, which was a huge prize. It's a couple hundred dollars. So I designed the quilt into a star. It's a hexagon. It's not square, it's six-sided, it's for like, it fits to the floor on a queen-size bed. Pam Randall quilted it, and she did it each diamond individually. And then I just used the same fabric on the, well, no, not the same fabric, um, it's the same fabric on the binding, but the back was great. I'm going to have to say thank you. I'm running out of battery. <laughs> okay. Well, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Karen. Not well, you just asked about the black box. I used to do costume memeing for theater works for the black box theater. Yes, that's, you did one play I was in, you did the costume for, but what I can't were you remember in? which one. I, I did the one where it was all the women. The women. The, oh, went um, to the beach every year, and I played the former nun who had gotten pregnant. Okay. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yep. But yeah, I did. I think I did like ten or eleven different. And then there was another one I was in yeah. too. Not only was I playing a former nun, but I've served as a minister for twenty years. So. <laughs> <laughs> But the people from the church got a kick out. And your name? 
Oh, you don't need to know my name. I, I'm Sarah Whitmore. Thank you, Sarah. I'm, I'm plum retired right now. But well, we all are, but that's all a good thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, uh, oh, there are two more quilts on the other on the other side. I'll go look. Thank you. Yeah.